Hey guys, what's happening? It's Chris Bircher, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. And I'm back with episode 75. How do you know the difference? And I hope this is a, I may, I may have to adjust this title, but for right now, this is what makes the most sense to me about what I want to talk about today. When you, when you get in a situation and you, you just don't know what the answer is. I, and I talked a little bit about this in an episode a while back called, how do you know if we really know what we think we know? But this is a little bit different. And I'll get into it in a minute. But first, I want to remind you that I have my R versus Should interview series uh, coming out now. And you'll find a preview episode for that on my website on Tuesdays. And then the full episode will come out on Thursday. Same place you get all my podcasts, you my YouTube channel, or wherever you subscribe to my podcast now. If you subscribe to the podcast, it'll automatically update. If you subscribe to my webpage, put your email in, you'll get a notification for all these things so you won't forget. Uh, but so Monday is a flashback episode for an episode that came out a few months back. We're well into the R versus should uh, program again for, pe- for people who haven't seen all the new stuff. Tuesday is a preview episode for that week's interview. Wednesday is a preview episode for Friday's solo episode or new episode. Thursday is the actual new interview episode, and Friday is the actual new regular discussion episode, like this. So, how do you know the difference, and and what is this all about? Well, last week I talked about self-compassion versus self-pity, and part of this stems from the same situation that I found myself again and again that I've identified as being a critical point for me to change things, and that's that point I talked about last week where you once you do a little bit of self-help personal growth work... Instead of everything, all of your reactions happening automatically and at the speed of light (laughs) before you know what's happening, by sort of mastering our awareness, which is one of the goals um, of all of this, we can actually learn to, to, to recognize when we're in a situation and we can sort of see that reaction happening automatically. And so, and it's, and now if we can do that, then we've bought ourselves the opportunity to do something about it. And, then, you know, the, and this is multiple steps down the line, and it's pretty advanced if you ask me. And what, of course, I've been doing this for 10, 12 years, and I'm just getting to the point where, all right, all right, I see myself doing the same thing over and over again. And that's a result of these old beliefs and these old habits and these old patterns. Now I see them happening, and I have a minute to go, hey, look, I'm doing that. I'm beating myself up again. I'm, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, look, I'm getting mad at the kids again over this. Oh, I'm taking this thing personally. Okay, but now I need to learn what to do. And I find that in this interface of trying to determine what to do, uh, being an analytical ex-scientist who sort of looks at reason and evidence-based learning as, as how I make my decisions in the world, which in and of itself is a belief system that I would like to let go of. I'm in the process of sort of be wanting to become less analytical and more feely, right? More touchy-feely. And so that's the kind of opportunity. But if you're one of these people who needs evidence and, and uses reason, you, you're going to pick, pick up on this big time because that's me. Now, some people are just a little bit more open to uh, the spirituality of the world and sort of the, the, well, this isn't my gut, right? My intuition. Some people are just better at that. And I'm not, but I, I, I want to come at this as a whole person and not just a scientist because that's a trap. You know, I, I, Some things reason doesn't work. You know, I can't tell you, like last week's episode, I don't have an evidence-based study, although they exist, they're just, I don't know, they're not convincing to me of why self-love is a better strategy than beating yourself up all the time, or why meditation works, or why religion is helpful to people. These are the types of things that people are studying, but it's challenging to come up with um, sort of uh, empirical studies to show you and lead you in a mathematical way about these things, which I think is awesome and I love it. And and, and sort of in my R versus Shit episode about hard and soft realities, that's what I was getting at is some of the world exists outside a, a phys- like the realm of physics. And I refer to that as a metaphysics, right? There's Metaphysics is really... Um, you can't access that world with math. <laughs> you access that world with your somatic self, with your body, with your senses. 
Uh, and, and to me, this has been the biggest revelation of my journey is just to sort of realize that science ain't all that. It can tell us a whole lot of stuff about the way the world works in a physical, measurable, um, material sense, but that's not all the world is, right? Uh, and so anyway, and as much as that helps, you know, part of, I think, figuring out the difference is not using a single methodology to uh, ask and answer the question. And so I guess the one way of looking at this is when we are in a situation where we just don't know or we, we, we feel ourselves implementing an old habit, but we have now bought ourselves a minute to sort of go, wait a minute, what's going on here? You got to open yourself up to this new world and you have to sort of ask the question a different way. Because the question is, am I right about this old thing? Am I, is there really something wrong with me? And I can find the evidence that shows you there's something wrong with me because I screwed this up. I didn't get the result that I wanted, and that means I'm a failure. I got the evidence-based reasoning, and it points in the wrong direction. Or, you know, am I, am I uh, you know, do I not deserve to be here? Am I an imposter? Am I over my head? Do I not have the skill set? Am I not good enough to do this? And that's why I failed because there's the failure. There's the measurable failure. I didn't make any money. I bought these stocks and they were and they went down in value and I sold them and now I'm I'm lost a thousand dollars on that deal. I'm a failure. Or I applied for that job and I had an interview and they didn't pick me. I'm a failure. That's the evidence. But that's only evidence for that one thing. Again, like I said last week, you can fail, but that doesn't mean you are a failure. You know, everyone fails. <laughs> and really, few people, if any, are failures, right? And that doesn't even matter. Why would you even put that label on yourself? Because if you succeed once out of a million times, you're not a failure because you succeeded that one time. <laughs> and I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and so the big things that I do to myself, beat myself up, feel like I don't belong, um, feel like there's something wrong with me, even things like analysis paralysis or catastrophic thinking or all or none black and white thinking or mind reading, you know, these are all things that we do but the problem is we wouldn't do them if we didn't believe them and if there wasn't some evidence, right? Like I said before, I screwed up. That's evidence. That's evidence of me being a failure. I failed a test. That could mean I'm a bad person, right? It could. We have to let go of that. You know, so could. It could mean a lot of other things. And so, you know, you drove to work today without getting in a wreck. That means you're a success. I mean, it's looking for evidence and and sort of verifying your findings. What what is that? It's not the Dunning Kruger effect. That's when we all think we're better. Uh, it's like self fulfilling prophecy. I can't remember what the psychological explanation for that is. Um, it's like um, you know, evidence based. It's like the people do on Facebook. It's ethnocentrism. You you were looking for people who are like you. Oh, I'll, I'll just call it self-fulfilling prophecy. And I'm sure I'll remember this when I write the, blo- the blog post. Um, we validate our own thinking, you know, by, by selecting uh, for uh, things that agree with us, right? But you got to let go of that. I mean, that's, of course, that's, that's a very biased and, and erroneous way of going about your life. And so you, you at least have to consider other explanations that are equally valid. <laughs> and all of them are, because that explanation that you are a failure because you messed up once is, is pretty absurd. That's also like saying, well, you got a second place trophy in your eighth, eight, eight-year-old soccer team. So that means you're you know, as successful as Elon Musk or, or whatever of these measures, all these things. You have a million billion dollars because you don't. I mean, it's, it's just as uh, erroneous. So um, the point is we wouldn't do these things to ourselves if they didn't make sense to us. And the idea is that how do you convince yourself that your conclusion is wrong or at least one of multiple conclusions. And a, and a good example is me, again, I used the example last week about my, my, my real estate investment career and my inability to get contractors to do work that I need done, whether that means I, I, I can't get them to show up, I, I can't get them to give me quotes, I can't get them to come back, I can't get them to finish a job. And, and one part of me says, I can't control people, which is true. 
but I can do better. I can try new strategies. What I'm doing now, trying to be super cool and standoffish and letting them know that I'm not going to pressure them into doing work isn't working. Um, and Neil Bjorklund, who I'll be interviewing um, as part of the Average Shit Interview Series, is also my coach, healer, teacher, um, uh, support crew, <laughs> laid it out for me one day and he said, well, you got to look at it this way. Those, that contractor has 10 other people just like you wanting him to do work. If they're all calling him all the time and you're not, you're not going to be on the radar. It's not that he has any, it's nothing personal. It's just a matter of you have to at least participate in the game and give him as many reminders as everybody else, at least just to keep him flowing through because he's only human. He's, he's going to go to the, the, the brightest burning fire is the one that needs to get put out. And if you never show him that you need him again, it doesn't work like that. So I just said, oh, oh, I didn't think about that. I see how this works now. I'll simply make an effort to call them every other day or, or you know, three times as often as I'm doing now. And you know what? <laughs> it's working. So it turns out I wasn't a failure. I failed at understanding how to play that game. And then once somebody taught me how the game works and suggested a strategy to implement, I implemented that strategy and now I'm not failing nearly as much and I don't feel bad about myself. In fact, I feel uh, uh, good about it. Um, And I didn't see before where there was room for alternate alternative explanations because I was so laser focused on my explanation that I was right about myself and that's part of this old belief, limiting beliefs thing and habits that they're so strong, they're going to win out. But like I said before, once we ha- gain the ability through our, our personal growth work to have a choice, we can start to argue with our conclusion. And so now, and it really helps, this is my point, when you have some evidence to support that. So now I can go, oh man, that plumber said he would show up and he didn't. I'm a terrible person. I'm not good enough. I suck at my job. I really shouldn't be doing this. Wait, 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 wait. But the one time when I just called him and reminded him, that guy showed up and it just took a couple, or another couple of days and something had come up and there was an emergency. Maybe I'll just call him. And maybe this time I'll call him, see what's going on. And then I'll remind myself and I'll schedule it on my phone to call him the next day just to sort of follow up and see what he's doing. And maybe I'll do it in the morning because now I know he's in the office at 8 before he gets in this truck and goes to the job site. Maybe I'll try to catch him then, so he'll answer the phone and I won't leave him. And so this goes into this whole better solution based on the idea that now I have some competing evidence, if if that's the way that it needs to work. And so that's one way of supporting yourself. Now, above that, probably the furthest upstream you can go is just to simply open the floor for is, is, is what leads to that conclusion is opening the floor for other evidence, other lines of evidence and other support. You don't necessarily need evidence of success to argue with yourself. You just need to understand how the world works and relax your limited beliefs. So if I get in a situation where I go, the contractor didn't show up and it's my fault because I suck. And then the other voice that I've learned through personal growth, self-help, coaching, and all those things goes, well, let's push back on that a little bit. Maybe I'm I'm actually just a human being, and I'm just like everybody else, and I'm experiencing things that everybody else experiences. Okay, now I have two options. And now I have a second option. So once you introduce the second option, that doesn't solve your problem. And here's the point of the whole episode. One option is your old belief. I suck. I'm a terrible person. I'm an imposter. I'm not good enough. Uh, there's something wrong with me. Okay. That's a, all, in, all good possible explanations for this situation. Then you learn through, through your work to introduce an alternative hypothesis. Maybe I'm just human, and maybe this is just something that happens, and maybe there's a different way out. Okay. How do you know? Right? So in order to consider the alternate hypothesis, you have to open the door for the first one not being true. But if you're so set on it being true, opening that door becomes exceptionally difficult. And so you're 
anytime you give yourself the opportunity to make this choice, you're not going to do it. Even if you're strong enough and you've done enough work and you've bought yourself that time between the stimulus and response where you have a choice of not believing this thing, all of your, for me, 49 years of living, all of the reinforcement you've done with that belief, all the times that you convinced yourself that that was right, all the number of times you automatically pulled that strategy out and threw it up and you didn't even know it was happening, that all added to this giant pile of evidence that that actually works. What you have fighting against that is this discomfort and this anxiety and this depression and this sadness and this wonder and this sort of like discomfort and this struggle and these things. That's your non-supporting evidence. That's your your you know um, anti-evidence, <laughs> your alternative evidence. You have other things, beside, but you don't listen to that. There, there, there's plenty of other things in your life that you can use to combat that line of evidence or to argue against it, but you don't do it because it's so strong. And that's the problem with limiting beliefs. And really, much of this um, self-destructive thinking that we do is because you've unconsciously built up this strategy to be exceptionally powerful and to and part of that power is eliminating alternate hypothesis. So, you know, your belief, if you want to think about it like an organism, it wants to live and it's going to fight back with every tool it's got. And you don't even see it coming. You know, you see its teeth glaring at you and wanting to bite you. And then it sneaks around and slaps you in the face with its tail. And you didn't even know that was going to happen. And so you really have to make a concerted effort to, un, to not believe it, to suspend belief. So if you want to know the difference between whether your old belief is right and that you suck as a person and any other possible uh, truth exists, that in and of itself is challenging. And you might think you're doing it, but you're not really doing it. And this is where I really screw up. I will talk myself. I will introduce alternate hypothesis. Well, this happens to everybody. Yeah, but. And then I yeah, but myself to death. Right. And it's, yeah, but I'm a special person and I, you know, was bullied as a kid. And then that self pity comes in and I use that against myself. But what that really does is it supports the old belief and it just makes it stronger and stronger. And it sits over in the corner laughing its ass off because it didn't have to do anything. You pulled out all these other strategies that are related to it to push the, you know, to, 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 to push the alternative hypothesis, hypothesis away before you even had a chance to run it through the analytical machine. Now, if you're not an analytic person and, and rely on reason and believe in science as much as I do, and that isn't a weakness that you have and you are in touch with your intuition, it may be easier to listen to that side of you because that side doesn't work in, in, in the, the imposter syndrome, I'm not good enough, something's wrong with me world. You know, that's, that's based on sort of like, you know, uh, more of a physical material world thing. And so that's a, that's something you can do also is just to meditate, to spin belief, get in touch with your body and sort of just say, how does this feel? However you do that. And I'm not very good about it yet. And I can't really teach you how to do that. Um, but that is another tool where you can say, this feels bad. I don't think anybody would argue with you that this beating yourself up is it feels bad. I mean, the only thing good about it is it's familiar and it's historic and you, you know, parts of you think that it works still. Um, and this other thing doesn't seem that unreasonable. Well, I mean, people aren't perfect. I've heard this everywhere, right? What does that feel like? Well, it, it feels like a lot less pressure, right? That feels a lot more relaxed. It feels a lot more compassionate. Okay. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, and then there's this whole idea that you can fail without being a failure. So it's sort of like, you know, why do you continue to define yourself in a very limited way? Because that closes the door to change. You're sort of saying, I'm stuck this way forever. But the whole idea of any of this happening is that you're trying to change. And so you have to sort of open the door to that. And don't you think that you can? Can't you search back, again, if you want to take the analytical route and find evidence in your life that you actually have changed? You know, it's like, oh, man, I used to eat Doritos for breakfast, and I, and I decided that was a bad thing, so I stopped doing it. Or something maybe more realistic. I used to drink cream in my coffee, and I realized that was a lot of extra calories. And I learned how to drink black coffee every day, and now I do it, and it's a habit. Hey, I did that. 
And so you can take the analytical reason path and sort of find evidence to fight against this evidence. But again, that's not going to be enough because your whole being has constructed all of these strategies to keep any new thinking out of it. And if you think about it, this is the R's versus shoulds, right? All of that constructed belief system is an element of something that wasn't you. It came from the outside, uh, it, but it, maybe it had a good reason and maybe it needed to happen. Maybe it was protecting you and, and making you feel safe, but it wasn't meant to be. And I think that's part of the fear that I have is that if I let go of this, I'm not good enough belief system, then the whole house of cards is going to come crumbling down because that's the only reason I've been able to be safe in the world. That's how strong this belief is that you think that's the reason you're not in the fetal position on the floor, homeless and hungry, a basket case, whatever it is that you fear could happen and make your life worse, you think this strategy is what's standing between you and it. And so letting go of it is so hard. And you're going to convince yourself that there is no alternate explanation, and therefore there is no way of telling the difference between what is right. There's no way of knowing if this new explanation is right over this old belief that you have, because the fear that you be of you being wrong is so strong. Again, everything. It's all of a sudden it becomes as critical and intense and real as when you were the eight year old kid on the playground, afraid that these three big people were going to hurt you or whatever it was, right? The pressure of whatever unsafe and terrible thing happening to you is as, as, as real as it was then. It's as real as it ever could be. And that's what you're fighting against. And if you can realize that, the intensity, the magnitude, the strength of your resistance to changing that belief is stronger than perhaps anything, as strong as an addiction to heroin maybe, if you can believe that and understand that, then maybe you can relax a little bit and go, well, yeah, no matter what I say to this belief, this behavior, this habit, is not gonna, it's not going to believe me. So, of course, it's going to say no. Of course, it's going to push back. Of course, it's going to say, no, I'm right. You suck. That's the only conclusion that we can make. Let's move on with our day. That's how it stays alive. (laughs) Something about knowing that helps me understand what I'm up against, right? And then to think that that voice is, is shooting you into believing it, right? If you, if, you can, if you knew where you were, if you knew where your real self was, your, your core belief system before this came up, before whatever happened to you happened to you, and then happened again and again over time that built this thing up, if you could go back in time before that and connect with that person, they would tell you what happened. They would help you understand. And you would know sort of that you did actually feel a different way at one time. And so it's okay to feel that way again. And that you don't really know anymore if telling those bullies to shut up or punching one in the gut or kicking them in the nuts or whatever it is you could do differently now may be a better result. It may be a better strategy. It may result in a new mode. It may help you dissolve and take apart this old belief and then learn to behave differently and build new habits in your life. Uh, but, but, but the first thing you have to do is, is, is take away its power. And that is so, that may be the entirety of the problem, as I understand it, is just getting the wedge into the little crack to start to pry it loose, Right? That it's the tiniest little effort. It's really like the just being aware 
of what you're doing gets the ball rolling, right? And then then you got to figure it out. But the problem is that's a huge victory. When you can catch yourself when the stimulus happens and a situation comes up in your life and you implement this old belief system of I'm not good enough or uh, there's something wrong with me or whatever, that's great. Look, I'm doing this. But at first, for a long time, you recognize it, and then eventually you go back through it. And I found myself days into this whole like waking up and ruminating at night, and just like, why am I feeling this again? This is these are old things. I don't like this. What's happened? And I can go back and go, oh yeah, I, oh obviously this is what's happening. So I mean, it sucks that it's such a slow process. You but 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 you just keep going back. It's one step forward and two steps back. Right again. Why? Because these belief systems want to live. They're so strong. They're so powerful. They have so many tethers of strategies that you don't even understand these things are related. And so the one thing that you can start to do after two things, right? The last two episodes, I'm aware of what's happening. I do these things. I don't like it. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have some self-compassion. I'm going to Give myself a break and congratulate myself even for sort of realizing what's going on and not have expectations of being able to fix it immediately because then that's the whole thing again. I can't fix this. I can see it. Great. But I can't fix it because I'm not good enough, because I'm a failure, because there's something wrong with me. And then it pulls you right back into the power of this old belief system. And so you you got to, it's resistance and just remembering, okay, calm. And then again, the meditation and the journaling and 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 healthy lifestyle, all the stuff is going to help you move. And then once you sort of get good at that, maybe one time the opportunity comes in to sort of go, and, and this is what I do now is I go, I don't know, man. I think I just, I think I just, I just suck at this. I mean, I think I can't come up with any other conclusion. And then I sort of go, well, wait, wait a minute. Maybe there's another way. Maybe I, maybe there's an, another way to know the difference as to whether or not my alternative explanation is possible. Maybe, and really the only alternative explanation that matters is that old belief isn't actually true. So if I can just, it's, I'm asking the wrong question, right? I'm not wondering, I'm asking the question erroneously, what's the difference between me being right about being a failure and, and this alternative explanation I'm trying to come up with that says, actually, I'm really good at this. Or actually, no, uh, I just had a bad day. Or whatever my alternate explanation is, I'm looking for that to become as powerful as the old thing. It just can't compete. Right? It's never going to be able to compete. And that's why how do you know the difference is such a hard thing. Maybe an impossible question to answer. I'm never going to come up with... A magical new explanation that makes sense, that explains everything, and makes this old system go away because the old system is just too strong. Instead, what I can do is say, is there room for an alternate explanation? Is it possible that I'm wrong? Is it possible that there's something going on here that I don't really understand that allows me to not believe what, I'm, what, what this voice and this thing is telling me? That's, that's it. It's like, it's like the not doing. I'm going to, my habits and old beliefs are going to make me do this thing, which is beat myself up and think I'm a failure. And that's supposed to motivate me to be a better person or whatever. All right. What if I just don't do that? What if I just sit and resist that, 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 that spiraling out of control, downhill snowball that comes after I, I surrender to that. What if I just don't feed the bad wolf? What if I just, you know, don't give in? I think that's how we move forward. And I'm going to think about that, and I'm going to try to do that in, my, in the future and, and, and realize that sometimes we just ask the wrong question. How do you know the difference? Well, you don't. And maybe that'll even go back and change the title of this episode. I'm not sure yet because that's sort of an epiphany for me. And I hope that you've gotten something from this episode, too. It's been Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom, episode 75. The R versus Should Problem, How Do You Know the Difference? I'm Chris Bercher. Take it easy.